Well, this is our annual hummingbird banding at Saipite Mountain Wildlife Area. We've been doing this for a lot of years now. We've had a couple of years when fires and pandemics have interfered with us doing our hummingbird banding here. But we take a once a year sample here to get a feel for how healthy the populations are and how well this area is supporting migrating hummingbirds. We, we do it at the end of July, which is a big time for our local broad-tailed hummingbirds here around the White Mountains that um, they should have a lot of babies out of the nest by now. But there are also a lot of rufous hummingbirds and calliope hummingbirds southbound. And so it's a time when we can, can pick up not only some of the local birds and determine how well they're doing, but also some of the migrants. And again, see how well this area is supporting uh, this diversity of hummingbird species that are here. Wow. It's a gorgeous adult male calliope. He's going to take a tiny, tiny little band. I'm going to test his foot just to make sure I know what size band to put on him. Oh my, yes. Yeah, teeny little band. Okay, so he's going to get extra small band number M70599. I'm going to get the band lined up properly in my pliers. there bud that looks good on you there we go okay make sure it's properly aligned and rotated on the foot to make sure it doesn't doesn't bind anywhere and I got to tug it a little to make sure it doesn't come off because even though it's the extra small size he is an extra small bird okay all right so Bill length, 14.4, and that's in millimeters. Do everything in metric. Tiny little Bill. He's peeing all over me, as they are wont to do. 38.7, short little wing. And a stubby, stubby little tail. 21. Measure the width of his R5. Three point seven. Let's see, none, none, ninety-nine. All right, check him for parasites. Oh. Hmm. Wow. Been a long time since I've seen one of these little dudes. This is wonderful. Okay. Ooh, good for you, buddy. Checking for molt and fat. He is replacing a few of his body feathers, some of which may have just been knocked out in fights with other hummingbirds. Um, and he's got heavy fat, so he's probably been here at site for several days and is getting ready to move on. Uh, dash for breeding condition. Don't see any pollen on him today, um, and that probably reflects the very poor bloom conditions we've got. The uh, monsoon hasn't quite uh, caused the uh, normal late summer bloom that we like to see this time of year. So there's not a whole lot of hummingbird pollinated flowers out there for these guys. Oh goodness, are you three grams? You are three grams, wow. That's pretty good. Calliope males are usually around 2.5, 2.6 grams. They're little bitty guys. So he's got pretty good weight on him with all that fat. <clears throat> all right, buddy, let's get you a drink. Oh, yeah. Okay, hang on here. Let me get a... No, you don't quit. Quit, quit, quit. Don't do that. Don't do that. Grab onto your wing. You won't be able to fly if you have a hold of your wing. All right, little buddy. Oh, he's a good-looking bird. Wow. He is... He has got such extravagant purple, red... You want another drink? I don't care, bud. Another sip? Yes. Okay. All right. Ready to go, buddy? 
He's just not quite ready to go. Here he goes. <laughs> All right. Cool, cool, cool. All righty. So Tom's got me another bird already. So what we have here, we have a beautiful adult male broad-tailed hummingbird. He is just absolutely gorgeous. He's probably one of our local sight birds. Uh, so he's probably been around all summer. And now he's battling it out with all these rufus that have come in. He's going to get a medium band, medium band number M71530. It's going to be his band number. The band lined up in my little plier here. And there we go. And give it a little cross squeeze to make sure that it closes properly. Need to make sure it's lined up and rotates on the leg. All right, that's good. That's good. Okay, buddy. Now we got to get his uh, measurements here. I know. I don't quite hear you. Bill length is 18.0. This wing is just magical. The outer two primary feathers of the wing are shaped especially to create that trilling sound. Sounds like a coach's whistle. 50.8. Wonderful long wing. Broadtails aren't very big hummingbirds, but they have big wings. It probably helps them fly in the high thin mountain air. And they have wonderful long tails. <laughs> they call them broad-tailed hummingbirds, but they're really long-tailed hummingbirds. Oh, look at that, 33. Wow, dude. That's quite a tail, son. Oh, man, what a bird. Mm. And they have this weird little bowling pin-shaped feather. has a little kind of a neck on it, like a bowling pin. And that feather, when they do their display dives to impress the ladies or impress rival males, that feather vibrates and creates a distinctive sound at the bottom of their dive. Okay, all right, so um, dash for R5. Grooves are none. Grooves are little fine wrinkles in the bill where the bill's still young and growing, and his obviously are not, is not. Um, so he doesn't have any grooves. Buff his little fringes on fresh plumage, and he does not have any fresh plumage on him. He's in quite worn plumage. He's had a long breeding season here. All right, G count is the amount of adult male type feathers on his throat, and he is um, fully accoutred with all the beautiful colors of an adult male. So he's a 99 is our default there. Okay, now. Good. Don't see any parasites up there. He is, does have a little bit of body molt. That's an indicator that it's the end of the season for him. Molt is slight body, and fat is only slight though, so he's not really prepped for migration yet. Probably will be another couple of weeks at least before he's ready to go south. And dash for breeding condition, because he's a male. And I do not see any pollen on this guy. So dash. All right, so now we've got to get his weight. I'll give him a drink, and then I'll get a couple of pictures for documentation. All right, handsome. Get him rolled up like a little burrito. Yeah, not a lot of bird there. He is 3.5 grams. He's just a hair under. I'm rounding him up. 3.5. Not as much bird there as you might think. Okay. All right. Whoops. Me, uh, Tom's got another bird for us. He wants a drink, but he doesn't want me to be giving him one. <laughs> well, he just doesn't want a drink. You ready to go, son? He is. He's ready to go. Okay. He had little speckles right here. 
Yes, yeah, he's got little little pink spots on his cheeks. Well, often at SIPE we have hundreds of people in a, in a normal year. There are hundreds of people here, and that speaks mostly just to the popularity of hummingbirds. People love their hummingbirds. I, I tell them if we were doing a workshop on flycatchers or sandpipers or something, there'd be a dozen people. But you talk about hummingbirds and hundreds of people show up. And some of the basic questions they, they want to know, first of all, why are we banding hummingbirds? And by putting that numbered metal band on the bird, it's like getting a social security number. It identifies that individual for the rest of its life. So if we catch that bird again, or if somebody else in another research project somewhere else in Idaho or Montana or who knows where catches that bird, uh, we can identify that as that particular individual that was here on that particular day. Well, Cypriot Mountain Wildlife Area it is one of our favorite visits this time of year. And it's also a favorite with birders and hummingbird photographers because the, the staff and volunteers here keep hummingbird feeders out. There are some flowers as well that the birds visit. And you know, in years when there are natural flowers, of course, that's even better. But the fact that they do maintain the feeders here, it brings in a lot of birds. Many of these birds that are here right now are probably birds that have been visiting these feeders every summer for their entire lives. And so you have this very well-established clientele of hummingbirds that in a year like this, when there's not a lot of natural nectar available to them, there's a lot of activity around the feeders and it's, it can be quite thrilling watching the birds buzz around. And so it's a lot of fun.